our gentleman yields back, recognize my colleague, uh, Ms. Carveo, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chair Lucas and Ranking Member Sorensen for holding this hearing, um, and thank you to the witnesses for joining us today. Uh, if there's one state uh, that perhaps unexpectedly is anonymous with the Artemis mission, it's my home state of Colorado. <clears throat> Excuse me. From navigation tools associated with the mission to the Orion capsule itself, Colorado's advanced aerospace infrastructure has been pivotal in the development of these missions. I'm also proud to say that I represent many of the workers and contractors who have made Artemis possible and I'm excited to continue my support for these missions. Um, however, I think we have heard a lot of concerns here about the timeline for the Artemis missions, um, and I think something that we've kind of been beating around the bush um, about um, is overall funding um, uh, for NASA um, and whether you have um, the money to carry these missions out. Um, so, uh, Associate Administrator Kerner, in particular when we hear today about uh, the pressures that you have to cut costs um, to maintain crew safety, to keep things um, on time, um, but also um, when we uh, have a Congress that has been unable to pass a budget overall, uh, what are the implications for Artemis if NASA is appropriated with flat budgets uh, beyond not just 2024, but potentially the rest of the decade? So as I mentioned earlier, we are in production on not only Artemis II, but Artemis III, Artemis IV, Artemis V. We have hardware and builds for all of those missions at various stages, right? So consistency in budget helps us be able to keep the cadence of those missions to where we can keep our team um, fresh and keep our team active and be, have them be able to actually produce the hardware in a timely fashion. We have been challenged by um, by Congress to have an annual cadence of our missions, and if we get stuck in either a flat line or a reduced budget kind of environment, what that means is we will prioritize the near-term missions. Artemis II and Artemis III will be prioritized, and those other missions in the interval between those other missions will continue to push out to the right. It would be my hope that we wouldn't be faced with that kind of a, a situation, but but that's how I, I would envision that, that playing out. I would add, though, um, resources is more than just budget in my mind. Time is also a resource, but also personnel is a resource. And one of the benefits of flying these Artemis missions is we inspire the next generation of engineers, of technicians, of welders, of people that can actually do the work, which there is a tremendous shortage of skilled labor in some areas that, as I'm sure you know, if you've talked to your, your um, for example, some of the contractors that are in your home state, they'll tell you it's sometimes challenging to find the right skill level for for building and doing the things that we're trying to do with Artemis. So consistency both in, in budget, but also the resources and the inspiration that we can provide to inspire that next individual who can help us build the generation that we're looking forward to building. Thank you so much. Those are very um, good points, and I think the consistency in budget probably has a direct implication on um, people being willing um, to, to take these jobs. So Dr. Griffin, in that same uh, kind of vein, in your experience, what can the impact of flat budgets and budgetary uncertainty for short-term CRs and shutdown threats, which we've had many of um, this uh, session, have on uh, the NASA contractor workforce and its ability to meet NASA's needs? Sorry. In my experience in both DOD and NASA, uh, multiple occasions over the years, uh, it's not so much a flat budget that is a problem. Actually, most of the time I would welcome a flat budget if I knew I was going to have it. Um, it's, uh, it needs to be at an appropriate level to accomplish the task at hand, um, but, but flatness in itself is not the issue. Um, the issue is that uh, when we do not have an appropriation on time, year after year, we force our... The government actually does very little work itself. It, it may plan and may integrate work, but the work is done by American industry and, and in some cases our partner industries. And when we cannot, when we stop and start that funding by delaying our or, or even skipping our appropriation cycles as we did in 2008, um, that, that is a huge problem. Thank you very much. I yield back the remainder of my time. 